Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how to jump out of a window using visual effects. Let's jump right in. Okay, so for the shooting you need a green screen to shoot yourself. If you, like myself, don't have a vest to hang from the ceiling, first shoot the upper body pretending to fall, then the legs moving freely by hanging from, for example, a doorway. We should end up with two clips, this one and this one, which we will combine later. I got that technique from Loot Crate, so check them out. The video is linked up here. What the? Up here. <laughs> also, if you want a more in-depth video about the behind the scenes of the entire film and how we set up the green screen, watch the BTS of my short film Virus. It's also linked up here, down in the show notes and on the end card. For the background of the building I jumped out of, I used stock footage. You can use whatever stock footage service you prefer. I use Pixabay, I'm not sponsored by them. This would be a perfect opportunity to get a sponsorship from Pixabay. Anyways, they are free, they are linked down in the description. You can download free assets on their website, but of course if you're more like Storyblocks or Adobe Stock or whatever guy, you can use what you want. I just use Pixabay. And the same building I used in the video is linked also down in the description. There is a lot going on down there. Check it out. Anyways, after creating the import settings, we import the footage into After Effects. Starting with the background image, I tried out different ones, but this one fitted the best. Since we don't need them for now, we can either make them invisible or delete them until later. Then we drop the shot with the upper body in. I intentionally shot it overexposed high key because I knew the green screen area around me was so small that I intended to use a normal key and a luma key. That's why I made it completely clip and wide so I can luma key it. You'll see it later, because the hand goes over the edge of the green screen. Next we apply the key light plugin, select the green of the green screen, make sure it's lit evenly while shooting, and then we play around with the screen gain, balance and the spill bias. Furthermore, we use the screen matte settings to adjust it even more. This really depends on your shot, it is different for every shot because it depends on how you placed your light and how evenly you lit your green screen. I can recommend using the shrink and grow and softness setting to get rid of the white wall and the area around the key. Maybe you don't have to do this if you hang in front of a green screen, since I had nothing to hang on, I did it in the doorway, so I had to get rid of the white wall. Gotta work with what you have. After tweaking the luma settings, we have to do some boring mask work, I'm sorry. You don't have to do this if you have a full on big green screen I did not have one because I had nothing to hang myself from so I have to do it manually with a mask you don't have to do it maybe maybe you have to do it watch these following steps on how to do it I did one mask covering the entire body to get rid of the white rest then one mask just covering the hand when it goes over the area of the mask and over the white background then we pre-compose the hand in the body layer then we drop in the second clip with the actor hanging and the feet moving pretending to fall and just copy and paste the key settings for the key light and the luma key and then do the same masking process for the feet please take your time for the mask so the key will look clean and slick and realistic and good this is really what separates it. I mean, motion blur does some kind of work, but good mask is essential, so take your time. Again, maybe you don't have to do this if you hang in front of a green screen. I just did it a run and gun way in the doorway, so I had to mask it. I'm not gonna say it again. Use a big green screen and you don't have to do this process way easier. Then I tried using the tracking tool to combine the leg part with the upper body part, but I realized that it would work better when I just keyframed the position manually because you can simulate the moving body parts in a more realistic way, in my opinion. Then we pre-compose all these layers so we just have the falling actor. Next we drop the skyscraper layer in and I also put a 2.35 to 1 cinematic aspect ratio in because I knew that I wanted the final film to be in that aspect ratio and this way I knew the space I had to work with. Also, if you want some cinematic aspect ratios, look down in the description in my shop. I have a pack with cinematic aspect ratios. The one I used in this video is for free, so you can download it just for free, cinematic aspect ratios. But I have a more bigger pack with more cinematic aspect ratios. You can check it out if you want, you don't have to. But again, the one I use, the cinematic 2.35 to 1 cinematic aspect ratio, the standard, it's for free check it out. I also threw on the LUT I intended to use for the short and did a basic color matching by taking out a bit of the saturation, but that was specific for my shot and it's not given that you have to do this as well. After the background was in the composition, I realized that the key was still not so clean and you could see some leftover spots. So I created a white solid so I can see where there was still some black artifacts or noise and removed them with another mask. So much masking today. 
so much more skill. Next we come to the animation of the jump itself. So I moved to the start of the timeline, adjusted the actor, myself, to a position and a realistic scale next to the window and created a keyframe. Then I moved forward a few seconds in the timeline and animated the character downwards by just dragging him down and then smoothing out the animation path with these handles right here. Then it's just a matter of going back and forth between the keyframes, let it render, watch it and adjust it until it looks just right and about realistic. Then I did some more adjusting on the mask so the key would look cleaner. Maybe you should do this before starting the animation, I'm not the greatest example, I know I'm sorry. Oh, and don't forget to turn on motion blur for the animated layer and the character falling down. For the broken window I jumped out of, you can't jump out of a non-broken window. Again, I use Pixabay for this, you can use your subscription-based stock footage site or another stock footage site, I just use Pixabay. And the links are again down in the description. To make the background of the broken glass image transparent, we have to set the blending mode to screen. If you can't find the blending modes, click this switch right here. Also, since After Effects is still in German, I said it a lot of times. Back when I recorded this tutorial, my channel was still in German, now I'm in English. So the language of this screen recording is still in German. In the next videos, they will be in English. But I left a link to a translation script for all the After Effects terms down in the description. I'm saying every effect you need to know out loud, but if you just see it in the video and you're like, this is German, you can click on the link down in the description if you can't hear what I'm saying. And there is a translation for every major word in After Effects. Pretty good script. Then we turn the image into a 3D object by clicking the small cube down in the layer itself and also turn it on right here. Same applies to the motion blur by the way, you have to enable them both. Then you move the glass in 3D space until it fits, I can't tell you this for your scene because every scene is different, it was like this for my scene but you have to play around a bit for your scene. Then I created a mask in the glass layer around the window so that the broken glass texture just affects one window. Well anyways, that's what I would have done, but my After Effects composition, my After Effects project got corrupted and I just could export the scene how it was to this point. Not the single layers, which would have been helpful, not anything else, just the video how it is right now. That sucked. So then I had to figure out a different way on how to work around it because I had some time pressure. I had to finish it within a few days and I didn't want to start all over again so I decided to stick with it. So I just used this layer I had and put it into Final Cut because this still worked, After Effects didn't. First thing I did in Final Cut, I did the 3D thing with the broken glass window texture in Final Cut, adjusted it, put a mask around it, already told you because we did it in After Effects just a few seconds ago. Then I wanted to create more depth in the window, so I drew another mask, this time on the footage layer, not the window layer, which revealed the black background. This was of course too much, so I duplicated the layer, deleted the mask, set the opacity to 30% and created the mask just around the broken part of the texture, inverted the mask and set the feathering to a lot until it looks like there's 3D space behind the window, like for example a corridor I jumped out of. Next I put an adjustment layer with the LUT on top of everything again, just like in After Effects, and then it's just layering different glass break videos on top of each other adjusting the size and rotation, masking them corresponding to the window, playing them at different speeds and timing them one after another like I did right here to make the glass particles seem to fall down in a natural way. I mean, physics and stuff. This part really depends not just only on your shot but on your glass stock footage you use. The one I used is again linked down in the description. It's from a YouTube video so I don't know about the rights, but I changed more than 90% of it, so I think it's okay to use, it should be. But don't take my version of the story for granted. It would be better to buy stock footage, but I did not found the right one, so I did not buy it, because this one fitted the best, so I used it. But I think it should be legal. It should be. Then I faced a big problem. Normally I just make the reflection in the skyscraper by copying myself, flipping me, putting a Gaussian blur on me, and that's basically it. But for this shot it was different. Since the After Effects file was corrupted and we only had this exported footage with me burned into the footage and no single layers to use, I had to key slash cut myself out of the layer again before I could flip and blur it. This was pretty difficult, but here's how to work around it. Again, this step should not apply to you. I just told you how to do it if you have the opportunity to use single layers. I did not have it, so I'm just gonna show you how to work around stuff like this but you should not do it. After Effects files should not corrupt. And I could have recorded it all over again from the start, but since I found a workaround, I thought I'd just share with you how to work around such moments. So first I duplicate the original layer and put a luma key on it. Then I put a white solid under it just so I can see the key better in front of a bright background. Fortunately, I was even darker than a background skyscraper, so I could luma key myself a bit. Then I made a rough mask flipped it, put a Gaussian blur on it which got rid of some of the lines from the windows, then I refined the luma key even more and keyframed the mask so it follows the person 
and starts right when I jump out of the window. Whew, that was a mouthful, but you should not do it. I'm just stupid. Then I put some more glass shattering and wow, I just now realized that I maybe should have put some shattering glass in the reflection. Well, well, well. You should do that. Anyways, so I just say it again one last time, you should not have to do this entire last step. If you can work with all your layers, you don't have to luma key it, mask it, you just select the layer of the actor, duplicate it, flip it and blur it. That's it. Way easier. I just wanted you to show that sometimes in filmmaking you have to find other solutions, workarounds and that sometimes there are more ways leading to your goal. Just don't give up. Don't do that. That was pretty cheesy, I know. But I'm gonna leave it in here. Believe in yourself. Find your goal. Work harder and do stuff and create videos and... <coughs> I'm sorry. And that's it guys, that's how you jump out of a window using visual effects. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here you can find a tutorial on how to add fire to your scene and right here you find the playlist to all virus visual effects tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe if you did and I will see you in the next video. That was smooth. Mm -hmm.